Right guys, so Mrs. Chops is about to pick me up. We're gonna go and pick up a subscriber's car. It's something completely different for this channel. Never had a car like this before on the channel. Something completely new could be a big mistake. So come along, let's have a look at it. Hey guys, not much of a YouTuber, am I? I uh, set off, rushed off there and forgot to bring my GoPro. So we've got her on my phone, which has a smashed lens, predictably, because I break my phone probably about once a month. I break a phone. Um, so we're in the car, in the car park of the range. Mrs. Chops and Brooke have gone in to go shopping. That's the only way I can convince them to drop me down. So I'm parked up in the range in the car that we've purchased, which has driven successfully this far. Um, I've just picked this up from a subscriber, Sean. Uh, big thanks to Sean for getting in touch to offer me this vehicle. Really, really kind of you to get in touch. Always appreciate when you people do. Um, and let me know about getting your cars. Sean and I have been back and forth from an email. We agreed in the deal before I came down on the basis of him showing photos. Um, at this point, I'm expecting you to be guessing down below what I've bought. The dashboard alone may well give it away for a lot of you, as will that stalk and so forth. Um, yeah, so Sean got in touch, said one of his parents has given up driving. I've had this vehicle for a long time. Is it something I'd want? I did hesitate because... I've never had one of these vehicles before. I don't do these type of vehicles. I do small, cheap-to-run cars, don't I, as a general rule. But I did have a version of this vehicle uh, as a, a company car many moons ago. So that kind of tempted me as well. And I thought, at the end of the day, if I'm not going to have a bit of fun and try some different stuff doing this, what's the point in doing it? You know, I, I do love cars. I love all types of cars. If I wanted to do it purely on a business basis... I would just keep buying small cars, small cars, small cars, and that's all I'd do. But this is supposed to be about fun as well. So I thought, let's just you know, go down, chance it, grab the car, and um, see how we get on. Now, you are now seeing the logo on the steering wheel, so some of you are having some good guesses, but what model have I got? What model is it? Right, I think what we'll do is wait till we get back to the unit, though, when I've got my proper camera, because um, I don't really do in a walk, fancy doing a walk around in uh, the range car park. Um, and also, I'll be able to give you a bit more feedback on the drive, when we get back to the unit but so far very impressed with it um yeah it's, it's it's driving very very nicely at the moment but we've got quite a long haul home uh we've got about another hour home so i'll give you when we get back to the unit we'll do a walk around and we'll have a chat about the car a bit more so guys it's the following morning from picking up the mystery car i drove it overnight uh i drove it all the way back i didn't miss a beat i drove it home last night didn't miss a beat, driven it in this morning. It has popped up with an engine management light, which I've checked, and it is for the thermostat, which looks fairly easy to swap out. So, let's cover the screen, and then we'll let you have a quick look as to what it is. So it is a Mercedes CLK. So well done to you, those that guessed it correctly. It's a Mercedes 280 CLK, one of 2006. The car is only covered 51,000 miles with a documented service history. It's not a service every year because it's been done off of the onboard computer. Because of the low mileage, there's gaps of like a couple of years, but the oil on it, we'll see in a sec, is absolutely pristine. So it's been done off the computer um, rather than being done annually, but it's all documented in there. We've got every handbook on it from the car from new. Everything from new is with it. Uh, I haven't touched it. I've thrown a bucket over it since we bought it home, but I haven't touched it other than that. But the bodywork is really, really good. Really good. So as I said, um, a subscriber gave me a, sent me a message and let me know that his father was giving up driving and they wanted to sell the car. And he'd had a couple of offers locally from local dealers, but would rather it went to me. As I said, I was perfectly honest and said I have absolutely no idea about them. I have no idea what their values are, what the retail market is for these things. Um, so I'd have to be a little cautious, um, put the offer in, which was accepted, and obviously we went and picked it up. So again, massive thanks for, for getting in touch, Sean, and letting me um, have the option of buying it. As I said, Sean's father was giving up driving, and um, they wanted to find the car a good home, and someone that was going to just bring it back to life a bit there but there's little bits here and there like there's some scuff uh, some paint here on the back bumper which I'll do and I think there's a little bit over here on the back bumper down here uh, I can't remember if there's any on the front bumper 
yeah it'll be on the front bumper there so i am going to get the rattle cans out uh, but they're nice easy areas to blend and paint to i'm not having to get into the major panels on the car at all the paintwork is really good having that it's just dull it just needs a really good machine polish it's never been machine polished uh all the paint is just as is it's got you know nettle rash down the side of it you know a bush rash from going down the lanes and so forth and this needs a really good machine polish but a fantastic looking car really is i say mega low miles fifty one thousand miles so um sean told me that it was a main dealer registered car the main dealers had it as their own car and then um then it was bought by sean's parents it's an avant-garde i don't know anything about mercedes spec level so i'm sure you guys will tell me where it sits in the, in the uh in the list uh interior is really i haven't got around doing any cleaning on the interior but the interior is a lovely cream leather that's all in really good condition really good condition just needs a good leather clean and a feed just really the driver's seat's the only one that's got any dirt on it because obviously that's one that's been sat in and the door card there needs a bit of a clean show around this side yeah see like the passenger seat's mint looks like it's never been sat in again just a little bit of a clean now obviously these seats have a lot of toys You've got every bit of different adjustment for the bolsters, the, the base, everything. It's electric, everything on that. We've got air con, uh, mobile phone. I'm assuming it's Bluetooth. I'd have to double check. It's not an actual manual connection. Automatic, of course, with the sports and comfort setting. Heated seats. Really lovely looking car. As I said, I've done what probably now in the region of about three hours of driving in this car now i'd say it's as smooth as silk guys it really is gearbox is a really smooth ch change suspension smooth it just wafts along put your foot down drops down and it goes absolutely goes got electric mirrors obviously all around electric windows electric boot release steering wheel controls I oh, know you're waiting for it. It's fully loaded, guys. So let's have a look underneath the bonnet. So as I said, this did pop a warning for a thermostat this morning on the way in. I've read the code, it's for thermostat. And I did think it was, it wasn't reading hugely cold, but it didn't get up to half temp. It was slightly under half temp, so I thought it was running fairly cool. So it wouldn't surprise me if it does need a thermostat. Under the engine bay is honest enough. It's not obviously been detailed or anything like that. Um, but I did obviously check the oil level on it and the oil is absolutely crystal as in I can see my finger through it it's a lovely colour so I say they may well have been changing only by the computer rather than annually like I would prefer but it is still getting looked after properly the coolant level is exactly where it should be that temperature just sat dead at that level all the time no problem at all so like I say it's running slightly cool but I, I've re-cleared the code we'll run it again and we'll see how it looks I think the thermostat is here so I don't think it's end of the world swapping it out if it needs to be so should we go for a little drive so Sean kindly left it taxed for me you can hear the uh, seatbelt butler go in there on my side there is a fault with the seat felt butler by the looks of it it's staying out all the time nothing i think i'm going to sort to be honest on the car this age it's uh it is what it is to be honest isn't it so into drive so we've got obviously we can go manual on drive but we'll just leave it in uh, in auto sean even gave it to me with three quarters of a tank of fuel 51,478 miles uh i'll turn the blower off I haven't found, apart from that seatbelt butler, I've not found any of the um, any of the electrics that don't work at the moment. All the seat functions work. We'll leave it in comfort and just have a little pootle about in it. Now I'm not. I did have one of these back in the day. I had a um, CLK C55 AMG when I was running a business with a friend many many moons ago. He went out and got himself an Aston Martin Vantage 
and um, I took on his Mercedes which was about five years old his AMG Mercedes and I enjoyed that for about a year or two until I paid £1,500 for front Bremo brakes on it decided that I didn't really want to spend that kind of money on it anymore but that was a lot of fun I did enjoy it but it did have uh, quite a lot of scuttle shake on it even though it was great fun coming sideways out of every junction with that V8 roar so this does remind me a lot of that getting in it um, but obviously not as quick so yeah straight away it is smooth suspension's good there's no noises at all for coming from any wheel bearing suspension anything like that the gear changes are smooth. The MO, it came with a new MOT, guys. It came with a new MOT. It wasn't advisory free. It did notice some play in the steering, which I think is a little picky. Having driven it myself, yes, you know, there's a little bit of play, a tiny, tiny bit of play, but it is a 2006 car after all. Um, but nothing that's making any noise or anything like that. It just really really nice place to be really quiet and smooth so we'll uh, go right here and then uh, hoon it a little bit and let it drop down and show you all that side of things that are good so here we go if we put our foot down she's off very smooth very smooth indeed you're protected. There's a little bit of engine noise you can hear it revving a bit, but it's overall it's really quiet. The ride's fairly firm on these, but to be expected, it's sort of a sports coupe, isn't it? It doesn't turn in anyone like the Suzuki Swift Sport does, but it still handles tightly. But this isn't the kind of car you get in and try and push, is it? You, you, this is a car to get in for a long journey and just waft along. And it just drives absolutely fantastic. I say I might have to do that thermostat, but it's not the end of the world. If I do, you can't expect a car of this age to need absolutely nothing. I'm just amazed how much of it does still work. Like I say, I can do all the controls on the seat and they all do, do what they should do without any horrible noises, anything like that. So, not really much to say guys, it's a really nice drive, I can't tell you that I'm going to have to do loads of work on it because I haven't really found anything neat to do it. What am I going to do with it? Well, it's got to be for sale, I'm a car trader, I sell cars, so it's going to have to go up for sale. What's it worth? I have really no idea whatsoever, I have to be honest. I have absolutely no idea what it's worth. That tree that I had to move down to get to work every day is still over on the side of the road there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Who, I don't even know who this appeals to. I mean, obviously the road tax is going to be expensive on it, I would have thought. It's not going to do probably more than 25 miles to the gallon, I wouldn't have thought either. Um, and it's going to need maintenance. It's a, an older car. It's going to need maintenance. It's just so smooth. I can't believe for a car this age how smooth it is. Yeah, it's going to need maintenance, so it can't be bought by someone who isn't prepared to put their hand in their pocket every now and then to look after it. So yeah, I don't really know who that who that type of person is, but it just seemed too nice a car to turn down really. And for a fair price as well. We paid £2,150 for it. Looking online at Auto Trader, it would suggest that somewhere in the region of four and a half thousand is its retail price, but you know I don't like to sit on cars for months on end. Uh, I can't afford to be doing that. I just don't like doing it anyway. It takes up too much space when I can turn over three or four cars in the same time frame. If it was a £3,000 Hyundai i10, you know, Kia Picanto, we know I'd turn that over probably within a week. So I can't afford to sit on this for months on end for the, for the uh, you know, finer sky price. What do I think it's really worth? I think 3995 would be a really good price. I want to have a decent margin in this because if I do get any warranty claims, they could be quite big. Um, but I did also say to Sean that if I end up doing better out of it than I think I will, I will be putting some cash back. I think realistically maybe 3495 might be the price point it sells quick at, but I'd have to be absolutely 
solid at that price point and I'd have to do no work to it. I think it's got the MOT on it already. I just double check that water pump isn't doing anything. Um, sorry, the thermostat isn't doing anything wrong. I'll put some more miles on it, get it up to temperature. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe check that at most. Um, but and do the paint obviously, which you know, if I have Davy do the paint for me, I'm probably looking in the region of about three or four hundred pound in paint. Uh, I could do it myself with the rattle cans, um, and I'm pretty sure I could do a fairly good job of it. Not far off what Davy would do without incurring that expense. A lot of people will say, keep it for yourself, James, waft around it. It, it really isn't me. <laughs> for some reason, I like driving I like driving little little cars and throwing them around, cheap little cars and throwing them around. Although I do think this is a lovely car, it's not really for me. Um, if it was an older Alpha, maybe, <laughs> which is probably the wrong idea, knowing how reliable they are. Anyway, so yeah, I don't know who it appeals to. I don't know what its real value is. Comment down below, tell me what you think I should retail this for. What do you think I should retail it for? I'll put a, um, I might put a six month warranty on it with warranty wise, but it's not gonna cover a lot. Let's be honest, at this age, what warranty company can cover much on this age? You've gotta be realistic about that. Um, and it hasn't, I don't know if they class it as a full service if you haven't done it on the computer or not. So they probably bring a lot of stuff that way, to be honest. So yeah, put down below, what do you think the retail value of this vehicle is? Where do you think I should be with a warranty on it? Um, yeah, what do you think of them in general? What's your experience? Of? I know this is the years of Mercedes that weren't as well built as the ones prior. I had the E320 convertible um, from a 94 plate and that was built like a Sherman tank. I think it was 94, 92. That was built like an absolute Sherman tank. Uh, came apart lovely, went back together lovely. I know these don't have a reputation for being as good as those, but again, 51,000 miles from you and two owners on the book. I couldn't resist it, could I? So yeah, I pulled up a home yesterday in it, parked on a bit of a slope, pulled the handbrake handle on the side. Handbrake's not working. The car wants to roll away. I've got to leave it in park, otherwise it's going to roll away. But, oh no, handbrake cable snapped. I've got to do it. Completely forgetting, of course, on these cars that, <laughs> that that's just the release for the handbrake it's not the setting for the handbrake that's the release for the handbrake it's actually got the pedal there you put your foot down on to set the handbrake so i go inside and start searching problems with handbrakes on mercedes clks and hear all this stuff about you know the brake season on the back and this that and the other ends i know something just went ping in my head from having my old mercedes my old cak actually up is that is that actually not the handbrake handle? It came back out, checked it, <laughs> lo and behold, that's what it was. So yeah, I mean, other than, like I say, that warning for the thermostat, the temperature on the thermostat, um, I don't think we've been out for a long enough run to actually, no, we haven't been, there's no point looking at the temperature now, we're not for a long enough run. But other than that, I say all the electric seems to work by the, the um, driver's um, seatbelt butler, which you can see is still sticking out. But other than that, everything seems to work. And I say, once we've done that bit of paint on it and give it a machine polish, I think it will come out really well. I do like this color combo, this sort of light metallic blue with the cream leather. Looks really good. Like I say, it is completely different for the channel. You know that I really do small cars as a general rule. And my Alpha Julius is probably about the biggest thing I've got uh, with the biggest engine. And I drive that myself, don't I? But so this is totally off the ball, but I thought is you know as I said you've got to grab a car like that so again massive thanks Sean for offering me the car hit me up with those comments down below hopefully some of you have got some experience in trading these type of cars and can tell me the way I should be marketing it I mean I was thinking should I be going to the Mercedes forums who should I be marketing it to what's the price point what's a fair warranty to be offering on a vehicle like this so you know you know with this channel a lot of it is your input guys that guides me on what to do as always, thanks for watching. See you again soon.